Hi, my name is Evgeny Yazlowski, and I'm a lecturer in the Mechanical Engineering Department. I primarily teach the hands-on and design focus courses. During this past year, I've taught three classes. Lab 1 for the juniors in the fall, machine design for the seniors in the fall, and senior design, which is a full year capstone course. All three of these classes, as we transition into online learning, had the same fundamental issue. They require extensive time in person, using lab equipment and machinery to create novel physical prototypes and experimental apparatuses. To start discussing how I address those challenges, I'll begin by focusing on the senior classes and then do a deeper dive into the Laboratory 1 course. In machine design, the goal of the course is to teach students the fundamentals of designing, planning, creating, and actuating mechanical electric mechanisms. Each week, students learn a fundamental topic from how motors work to how to choose gears or how to read from sensors. The goal is for students to understand the techniques that lead to design of the types of sophisticated machinery that mechanical engineers handle. To get them there, the theory that they learn in class runs along a semester-long team project where students take those concepts and incorporate them into a self-designed motorized linkage. Their linkage is tasked with pressing pre-located arcade buttons in sequence as quickly as possible. Last year, the project went smoothly. Students had many opportunities for creative designs, and they all took unique approaches to press buttons as quickly as possible. Doing a project on this scale during a pandemic seemed impossible. The majority of the linkages were machined aluminum, gears had to be ordered, the playing fields with the arcade buttons couldn't possibly be replicated at home, and yet I didn't want students to miss out on this opportunity. I spearheaded the effort in the department to think of a way to ensure students got their hands-on experience at home. We set out on a massive ordering effort sending each student approximately $1,000 worth of equipment, from 3D printers to motors to power supplies to safety equipment to tools to mechanical components. We designed a button holder that could be 3D printed. Working ahead of the students, I ensured that every part of their linkages could be made from these kit components. The students worked week after week, completing tasks that pushed them towards their finalized linkages. Teams met over Zoom, often with students spread across the country and the world. All 13 of the teams successfully completed the project. And, of course, all 13 achieved significantly higher scores than me. It was fascinating to see, even given the tight constraints they were under with their project kits, the amount of creativity they displayed. For some, the linkages moved so quickly that you can barely even see the buttons being pressed. In many ways, the next senior course, Senior Design, provided an even larger challenge. For that course, our senior mechanical engineers have great freedom in their project selection. In the past, that's led to a large variety. For example, last year we had a menstrual cup cleaner that can be kept with you and used wherever you are. The year before that, a spice dispensing device that automatically gives you the correct spices for a given meal and a research project that rotates a wheel with no motor, just based off of the change in material properties of cellophane as it moves from a humid to dry environment. Though students had their kits, there was no possible way that these could encompass every single project that they might want to do. Thankfully, we were awarded an additional $300 per student team by the department to help supplement the kits. And even more thankfully, the students adapted remarkably. I'm happy to report that the combination of the kits and our students' flexibility led to a wide array of projects that they're currently working towards their final prototypes with. From a novel 3D printed rocket engine team, which sought out sponsors on their own to make the engine a reality, to a small robot that scans pipes for deformities, alerting owners before there's a catastrophic failure to a small device that can be placed over any hole in clothes and rapidly automatically sew a knit pattern over it, and even a simple shower head attachment that can automatically clean your entire shower. Now, on to Laboratory 1, 
our introductory statistical and experimental course for junior mechanical engineers. Here, they learn basic experimental technique while applying their course knowledge to mechanical engineering problems. Prior to the pandemic, I submitted for the Innovative Course Design Provost Teaching and Learning Grant with a goal to transition this course entirely. In the past, the course focused on complex mechanical engineering equipment like the Instron machine to test the material properties of metal samples and heat exchangers to measure thermodynamic properties. Though these experiments are valuable, because of their complexity and detail, students often missed out on making critical choices. That is, to finish on time, they had to follow the instructions step by step, often not realizing why they were doing what they were doing. For the redesign, I shifted the focus from passive reproduction of these existing complex experiments to active experimental design. Using smaller scale kits for the juniors, two person student teams were walked through experiments that gradually increased their independence. In the first experiment, they measured if blowing on a hot drink actually makes a difference in the cooling rate. They were given the full procedure, but had to obtain the results and interpret them. They then filled in a six page conference style paper with their findings. In the second experiment, I increased the amount of independence. Students were tasked with finding how springy a cantilever beam is by measuring its free oscillation time. This time, students were given just the task, but had to choose the sensors and experimental technique that would get them there. Students chose a variety of techniques, from interrupting a laser beam to attaching an accelerometer. For this assignment, they additionally had to develop the methods section of their conference style papers on top of the results in discussion. For the final four weeks, students created new experiments. They began by submitting proposals to me. Once they were approved, they developed their methods and ran the experiments. They finished the course by summarizing their motivations, methods, and findings in a lab report as well as a presentation. Students showed incredible creativity with their experiments. One team used dyed water sprayed from a bottle combined with image analysis techniques to find how different sized liquid particles travel in a humid environment. Another used boots as insulators to effectively measure temperature change of heated nickels and from there back out the material that those nickels are made out of. And still other students sought to find the effectiveness of different geometries on acoustical damping. In total, we had 29 unique experiments. In parallel with the modifications I made to the course, I tracked the efficacy of those changes. Students completed surveys, assessing where they began the course and where they finished the course in three areas, key skills, course objectives, and lifelong learning ability, which is a set of questions designed to assess how students improved as independent learners. Though we're still processing statistics, I can share some preliminary results. In our key skills, we saw increases across the board. We measured the changes on a four point scale. Though students reported improvements in all of the key skills we measured, they reported the most drastic improvements in their designing and prototyping skills. We also saw a marked increase in their confidence as engineers. Among the course objectives, we saw a similar trend. Pulling aside some key results, we saw an improvement in their ability to identify and formulate mechanical engineering problems, to conduct background research and test their hypotheses, as well as to design and build experimental apparatuses for testing. And for the lifelong learning ability question set, which again measures their progression as independent thinkers, we saw improvement in multiple areas. Students reported an improvement in their ability to impose meaning upon what others see as disorder, to deal with the unexpected and solve problems. They noted that they felt more like self-directed learners and had an increase in their love of learning for its own sake. This past year provided immense challenges. As we transitioned to online modalities as a department, we decided that hands-on design-focused work was irreplaceable. The kits that we sent to students 
combined with a redesign of our courses to work functionally with them, made the best of a potentially dark period in our students' education. Our preliminary statistical analysis shows that these techniques were effective in helping our students continue to grow. I look forward to taking the lessons learned from this work and implementing pieces into my classes when we return to campus. Thank you.